Welcome to the Land of House YouTube channel. I'm Seth. I'm here at the Santitla Dam. This is a 212 foot tall hydroelectric dam. And I thought I would toss the drone up and get some close ups of this. I'm also gonna go head over to the Fontana Dam if I have enough light. So let's toss the drone up in the air and see what this thing is all about. I actually had never really heard about this dam before. I was just filming a micro hydro system and the guy said I should check it out. Um, so the pen stock that you see coming off of the dam there is actually taking the water over to be used at a different hydroelectric place. It's uh, kind of just capturing the water from this dam and uh, taking it over to be used somewhere else. So I don't think this location actually makes power, but that pen stock you see there on the uh, lower left corner is what uh, takes the water off to be used. After doing a bit more research on the Sintitla Dam, I found out that it was started in 1925 and they finished it in 1928. Uh, so it covers about 176 square miles for the, um, the drainage area. And the um, big giant metal pin stock that you see coming off the side right here actually goes uh, five miles and produces right at uh, 40 megawatts. Um, so definitely significant amount of power being produced. But it's just uh, pretty unique because it has that pin stock that travels so far to get all of that head pressure instead of just creating it right here at the dam itself. As I was driving past this dam here, you'll see in a little while, I pass up underneath the pin stock several times and I eventually actually come to the powerhouse that this pin stock goes to. I had no idea that this is the one that um, is used to produce the power. So I actually thought that this pin stock went to another dam and then I was kind of confused because it didn't make sense to have uh, the two different locations. So anyway, um, here's a quick picture of the actual powerhouse or uh, I guess generator that this uh, water goes to. Anyway, uh, definitely worth stopping by to see. I'm not sure if I was supposed to fly drones over this, but uh, nobody was here whatsoever. So I flew a drone over and I got some pretty cool shots in my personal opinion. All right, there's dam number one, potentially two more to go. Hopefully I'll make it all the way to Fontana and we'll see a 400 foot tall dam. All right, I'm gonna hop back to the car. I'll uh, try to get a quick shot of that pin stock going down here and then uh, we'll head on to the next place. Here is that massive pin stock. I think it's a 12 foot pipe. Uh, so a lot of water is flowing through that guy right there. Very cool. Man, it's a big pipe. Met up with the pin stock again. Looks like I'm gonna cross underneath once more. It's already dropping like 200 feet right there so the pressure this thing must contain is incredible railroad track over there I just arrived at dam number two it is over here in the woods I'm not sure if there's a better place to look at it so I'm just going to stop at this little pull off here and fly the drone over so we can see what it's all about this is the Chioa Dam. It is 225 feet tall. It was finished in 1919. It has five generators and produces up to 110 megawatts of power. This thing is pretty impressive. Let's get a closer look up here at the top. Well, there's the top of the dam. Let me see if there's a place I can pull off right up here and take a look at it. I think so. There's a pull off here for a service road. Let's me get kind of close so I can kind of give you a view here. So got the water on the back side and then the dam there, I don't know, maybe uh, 10 feet wide, maybe a little bit more. And then we can come over here and see what it looks like down here. Cool. It's not very loud, which is crazy, but you can see the turbulent water right down in there where it's kicking up all that must be a pretty good solid uh, wall of concrete to keep it quiet like that
Okay, on to Fontana Dam. That's the one that's uh, the tallest one around, over 400 feet. So, all right, I think it's about 20 minutes away and I've got one hour of daylight. This system right here seems like it might be pretty old. I wonder if it is still in operation. I hear some noise over there, so perhaps it is, but looks like it's a little powerhouse. And then it's got those double penstock lines coming down. And just that drop right there, I mean, that looks like at least three, 400 feet. There it is, Fontana Dam. We arrived. So this is the lower side. We'll have to uh, go up top and drive over that side as well, but I'll uh, get the drone and we can see what it's like up there. It's very windy here. Uh, these two tubes over here are the spillway. Um, whenever we either drive up here or fly the drone up here, we'll see that they have drained a significant portion of the lake because of the winter time. Every six months, they either raise the water up or lower it back down. Uh, but anyway, let's take a little uh, spin around here. There's where the water goes whenever it's exited the dam. Like I said, there are the tubes over there for the spillway. Zoom in just a little bit. And then we'll be able to see the little powerhouse over here where the water comes out when it's being uh, used for creating power. The Fontana Dam cost a little over $70 million to make back in the 1940s, which is an estimated equivalent to $840 million in 2022. Definitely expensive. Now, very soon after the dam was completed, cracks started showing up, and uh, they've been uh, drilling into the dam and putting steel supports in ever since to prevent that from uh, continuing to happen. The most recent time that was done was in 2016. So it's still having crack issues, but hopefully uh, doesn't break. Very cool. All right, the road goes back out where we just came from, circles way around and goes up to the visitor center, which is located right up here. Uh, so let's go ahead and make that journey. And hopefully I can uh, change the battery in the drone and send it back up here once we're on the top. So that should be fun. All right, I'll meet you up there. When the dam was being built, there was a great concern that the concrete was going to be so massive that heat would be trapped inside of the dam for years. Well, they decided to build this dam in sections using pipe joints that would allow cooling coils to be installed and uh, cool off the dam as it was being produced. The other concern that was uh, had over this dam was that the 400 foot drop off the top of the dam would cause um, the water to erode the dam as it was falling over. And that's when they decided to add the two different uh, spillways. And those spillways basically take the water and divert it away from the dam's main surface. And you can kind of see that on my previous clips where the um, spillway tubes kind of shot the water over under the mountain. So um, that's kind of the idea behind all of that. The Appalachian Trail does pass over this dam, and there was also a road that was uh, sunk underwater whenever this was built. Very interesting. So here are those big tubes I was talking about. I'll give you a closer look of those here whenever I walk up to them in a moment. But uh, so yeah, 400 foot drop straight down on those concrete tubes. I imagine they're right, erosion would have happened. On my drive over here today, I was noticing just how low this lake was, and I was unaware that they drain it so much during the winter time. I'm not exactly sure why that is. Um, they still use the power off of this all year long. Um, so anyway, right now it is about half of the height that it normally is. And you can see here just how wild it is to uh, be this low. 
I'll stop right over here where the spillways are and we'll take a look down those. Uh, they look pretty impressive from the drone. Now this is the Appalachian Trail. It says road closed. I don't know if that's just for cars or if people on the AT are still allowed to walk across. So I'll go up here and see, but um, it does say that it's closed at the moment. Let's take a look at this spillway. Should be quite an impressive drop. Woo! Gosh, <laughs> that's crazy. There's scaffolding down there. They're doing some work. That is terrifying. <laughs> wow. Absolutely terrifying. I wonder if I step up here real quick, if we can get a better view down in there. So I wonder if sometimes the water is all the way up here and these curve the water in. Uh, or no, these are just the doors. That's what it is. Cool. So uh, I guess that has a giant hinge down there. Swings that in. Interesting. Uh, but yeah, you can't really see much from there. We're from here. Shoot, man. That is so frightening. Anyway, I'm not sure if the camera does that any uh, justice or not, but it's crazy. So these doors are open and I'm seeing the hinge is actually right down in there, which is kind of wild. Uh, and these over here are closed. So let's see what they look like when they are down. There we go. So maybe if I can get a better angle over here. Wow, is that a chain? Cool. That's how they pick it up. That really heavy duty chain over there. All right, let's see if I'm able to get a good angle down in here. I don't know, I just find that really impressive. Okay, uh, the little gift shop over here has an overlook. So we may climb up there as well. And uh, I'm also just gonna step right over here to the edge so we can see uh, top down on the dam. And sadly, the microphone on my camera ran out of batteries. So here is a bit of a voiceover for you. So this dam was started in 1942 and completed in 1945. So only a couple of years. It is uh, 480 feet tall and 2,365 feet across. So almost a mile, which is pretty incredible. That's uh, like a 44 story building. Fontana Dam workers set a national record of placing 11,419 cubic yards of concrete in only 24 hours. That is a lot of concrete. This reservoir has uh, 238 miles of shoreline and covers approximately 10,000 acres. Um, it produces uh, 304 megawatts consistently. And I was trying to do the math. If the average home uses 20 kilowatt hours a day, then that would be uh, 15,200 homes here in the US that this uh, dam can supply uh, continually, which is pretty incredible. Um, it's got a flood uh, capacity zone of about 514,000 acre feet. So as far as my visit to this little visitor center here, it was kind of uh, messy, I guess. Maybe the COVID season had, uh, I don't know, they hadn't really repaired much, but um, some aspects of the gift store seemed like they were decent. But whenever I walked up to the top, I uh, looked at the maps and such, which... I was most interested in, but they were quite uh, torn up and ripped and weathered. So um, definitely could use a bit of repair, but I can definitely tell that at one point this little uh, uh, rest stop or gift store was definitely a nice place, but uh, I don't know, this one right here could definitely use a little bit of repair because it would be fun to see the three different dams and how the waterways work together um, with this dam here. But um, I also really appreciated that there was nobody else around. 
I'm not exactly sure if you're supposed to toss drones up in the air, but um, I certainly did. So anyway, here's me doing my usual outro saying, hey, I'm Seth Johnson. I've enjoyed it. It's cold, and I will see you in the next video. Bye. A quick side note, somewhere I read that the power off of these three dams was used to uh, send power up for the Manhattan Project to test out and create nuclear bombs. Very plausible in my opinion.